Hi, this video is giving a little bit of an introduction to RPA, also known as Robotic Process Automation. So just a little bit of background to start. RPA basically helps us automate some of those repetitive tasks, things that have very formal rules-based situations. So some common examples, gathering data from different sources and possibly compiling it and moving data together, copying and manipulating data from those sources, potentially filling out forms or other types of standard um, data entry, and otherwise generating standard reports. Now, the big advantage of RPA versus traditional automation, which includes a lot of coding and programming by your typical IT department, this requires very little or no coding expertise. It requires more of a good process understanding than coding. One thing it does because of that moves some of the automation into the hands of the end user, those that know the process the best. Now, we've been doing similar things with Microsoft Excel macros, for example, but RPA does very similar things, but you're not limited to Excel. You can go from your ERP system to Excel to uh, generating PDFs and emailing them, just to name an example. But those are just some of the things that you can do with RPA. Now, in an article by McKinsey, one of the quotes that I kind of like that really described it is takes the computer out of the human. So those tasks that are kind of repetitive, maybe low thought, lets you move those, let you do those quicker so you can focus on more important things. Now, the one difference between RPA and artificial intelligence it does not learn as it processes data. It just follows the rules. What hopefully will happen is as some of those mundane, frankly, boring tasks um, get automated, this may allow employees to focus on more significant tasks, those that actually require thought. One of the big advantages is it is easy to learn. In some studies, it's shown that RPA usually has a payback period of less than 12 months. In many cases, it depends on the, the process that was automated and is frequently seven times faster than manual processing. As of a survey about a year and a half ago, 53% of firms have started RPA projects and this is expected to continue. So just a little bit about how this works. First of all, RPA works best for tasks that are done frequently every day and depends, especially your first one, you'll want to be one to get a high payback. So it could be a process that is done every day. Rules-based, so um, you can define rules. Now you can have exceptions, but you need to know exactly what happens in those exceptions. And I'll show an example here in a little bit. Typically these are for what we would call back office processes. So think, you know, accounting would be a good example. And these are ones that are a little bit more end user oriented, ones that end users know best and frequently interact with. Now, one of the things that RPA uses is what we call a graphical user interface. And this is what most users are used to uh, when working in a Apple or Windows environment. So it's more of a point and click type of operation. There are actually three major components, the studio or bot designer. This is where you enter the information of how the process works and you put in the exceptions. So kind of think of a flowchart. If you can flowchart it, it could be a candidate for RPA. And then the orchestrator, that helps determine when they are going to, the bots are going to run and helps manage those and also collects data if something goes wrong. And finally, the bot. This is actually what you develop that does the automation. 
So there are a couple ways to uh, create an actual script. First of all is to record a process kind of like you do in a macro in Excel. And honestly, a lot of times I actually start here. Also by using a designer application. So there are actually kind of two types of designer applications and user friendly, which this is a little bit more looks like a flow chart and you use some drag and drop functionality and you fill in some of the details. And advanced looks a little closer to coding, although there are some drag and drop aspects to it. So most of us in this class will be using uh, the end user friendly version. Now there are two types of bots, attended and unattended. Let's start with the latter. Unattended runs automatically with no human intervention. Now attended, attended will stop and pause and ask a human for some feedback and then continue on with the rest of the script. So there's a vanity, there's time and a place for both of these. It depends on the application. Now, if it's a heavily attended bot, maybe that RPA is not the best option. So let's just talk through an example of RPA. So let's use this example where vendors send a PDF form to a shared mailbox. That's basically their invoice. And we are going to process those invoices. So uh, the RPA script could run, for example, once a week or once a day, I mean, and open up that email. And it would download, log in to the email and download each PDF, possibly save it to a network drive. And then it would actually process the invoice. So let's look from, so after that, we're processing the invoice. So it downloaded each file. Now we are logging into an ERP system, in this case, SAP. And it looks at that invoice. And for each invoice, based on using some OCR and artificial intelligence kind of behind the scenes, it can, or if it's a standard form, it knows where to look. So you wouldn't even need to use artificial intelligence. Uh, you could have it extract the invoice number, date, vendor quantities, the pertinent information that we would need to enter into an ERP system for an invoice. And this is a basic invoice screen for uh, SAP, it could take that information. And this is different information that was found on the invoice. I didn't have a copy of the original invoice used for this uh, test, but it would enter the invoice information here into the ERP system. And for each one that got processed, it could send an email to either a person or a shared mailbox, which is ever needed. And it would say that that message or that document was submitted. Now it can also handle some exception processing. So for example, if the invo information in the invoice is incomplete, or there's an error, you could, it could decide to either park the invoice. And in this case, it did park the invoice and then sent an email to a human. And if you can read that email, it says it's basically missing the VAT tax, or there's a question in the VAT tax. And it says, just reply simply yes. If you want to process the invoice with the provided VAT code, or no, if you want to return the invoice to the supplier. So the human, all they have to do is look at it, determine what the correct answer is, and just respond with a simple yes or no. And once that bot receives that email, it will continue to um, process the invoice as directed. So since we are doing this for this video for an accounting class, there are some ways that uh, RPA can be used in accounting. And this is just a handful of areas in accounting. So doing reconciliations, think about reconciliations. You're gathering data from multiple sources 
usually looking at it in a common area and doing some matching. Well, the bulk of the uh, downloading and matching could be done by a bot. And then, of course, additional review would need to be done by uh, a human. Processing documents, similar to what we just saw, if you have a common data source, that data entry can be done in our, with RPA. Reporting, we frequently gather information from various sources or various tables, within, even within an ERP system. And then, of course, audit. All right, there are kind of three main or four main uh, software applications with RPA. There are others, but we're going to just mention these three or four, I'm sorry. Automation Anywhere, UiPath, Blue Prism, and Microsoft's Power Automate. Now, if you look at each of these, they all have slightly different features. Of course, Power Automate being a Microsoft product probably focuses a little bit more on other Microsoft products, uh, but they all work with a variety of software packages. So depending on the types of processes you are going to implement, um, it would be best to look at and determine which software would be best for your organization. There are some things that may happen with RPA in the future. Um, in the future, RPA is likely to manage many or most computer managed processes. Uh, just because it's simple, it is more uh, simpler to maintain than coding. It can usually be done by somebody who is closer to the process rather than somebody isolated in a different department such as IT. Also, uh, many organizations will find better efficiency and reduce costs by using RPA and can uh, at least try to allow users to workers to actually do some of the things they enjoy rather than much, much of the busy work. And other trends are, you know, our smart process automation. Well, let's combine RPA and artificial intelligence and think about how much more that RPA will be able to do. We'll start to be able to use uh, some external processes and data from customers a bit more. And we can also probably use it for process improvement. So just a couple things to think about when choosing um, RPA projects. First, select the right process for automation. You don't want an extreme, especially for your first project, you don't want a very complex. You want to have a process that is well understood and you can basically flow chart it. If you can flow chart it with all the possible exceptions, it could be the right candidate. Is it one that you do often enough? A yearly process is probably not worth the expense of automation versus one that is done daily and maybe even a larger process weekly. Think about your overall goals with RPA. What, what are you going to try to achieve? What, what is your low hanging fruit? What are some of your pain points that are very mundane and take a lot of manpower? And can those individuals do other things of greater value? Kind of think about long term. What is your overall goal? I mean, there's different goals for your first project to get kind of that first win and then long term. And of course, throughout all this, remember your employees concerns. They may be fearful of losing their job. Um, most company, many companies have found ways to make their work more efficient, uh, reduce overtime. Uh, and also allow employees to do some of the more interesting things rather than moving data around, for example. And with that, have a long-term maintenance plan. One of the disadvantages of RPA is if the screens on the software change, you will need to update the RPA script. So having control over those scripts and ensuring that uh, they can be maintained in a orderly fashion will be very helpful. And finally, how can accountants help with RPA? Well, 
obviously the software is designed enough that accountants can use RPA, but there are just general ways as well. Of course, accountants' understanding of the process, you know, will help them define what what RPA is and how it should be used, you know, with the definition of the project and putting together, of course, the business case and techniques. Um, understanding, you know, accountants should understand basic RPA architecture and be able to analyze software providers. So these software options to help determine, hey, these are the kinds of processes we have what software package would be best and just work with our the IT group on the overall architecture. Probably the biggest one is understanding how to design. So uh, doing some of the record and play and working with more technical people if that's needed. Being able to design the process because if you know the process, you can help flow chart it, which will design the workflow. Of course, helping with testing. Uh, operating, so actually deploying and controlling the bots, uh, ensuring that they are working correctly, giving them an internal audit per se. And then, of course, long term, being able to revise and the processes as needed as business changes or updating the bots as needed as well. So these are just some of the ways that accounts can really be involved in implementing RPA within an organization. So I'd like to thank you for your time, and I hope this helped with the introduction to RPA.